starts right now. Domestic violence hitting another Bear County household, leaving a young couple dead in an apparent murder-suicide. The tragedy happened on Hickory Ridge in a neighborhood just off O'Connor Road near Converse, but Sheriff Javier Salazar said it could have likely been prevented. Sarah Costa has more on his message to the community about getting out of a harmful re relationship before it's just too late. A man and a woman in a relationship who are believed to be in their 20s are dead after an apparent murder-suicide. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar is calling this an act of domestic violence. The woman calling 911 early this morning, but by the time she called for help, it was too late. The sheriff said just after one this morning, a woman called from a home in the 7,000 block of Hickory Ridge in northeast Bear County, saying she had been shot. The call got disconnected, so the 911 operator called back. A dispatch called back, a male answered and verified that he had indeed shot uh, a female here within the residence and that his intent was to shoot her again and then kill himself. He then hung up. Bear County deputies and Converse police officers arrived at the home and heard two gunshots from inside. The sheriff says they forced themselves into the home. That's where they found the man dead inside a bathroom from a self-inflicted gunshot and the woman had two gunshot wounds to her lower body. She was still alive. Deputies tried to save her by applying a tourniquet and rushing her to Bamsey, where she later died from her injuries. Sheriff Salazar says he urges anyone who is in a harmful or potentially dangerous relationship to not wait and to ask for help. I would say if you're in a situation like that and there's any signs that it's gonna start getting worse, because we know it's an escalating crime and we know that it doesn't go away, Call us, get yourself out of that situation. There are resources available and all you need to do is reach out and let us know. At this time, the motive for the shooting is currently not known and the names and ages of those involved have not been released. From the Northeast side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. This noon, a murder investigation continues more than a year after someone killed a 16 year old. Police still trying to figure out who's responsible. Police say back on February 20th of last year, Isaiah Sullivan was inside an SUV like the one pictured on your screen. He was shot and then thrown out of that vehicle near the entrance to the Star Club apartments on Starcrest. Officers say they need the people who were actually inside that vehicle at the time of the shooting to come forward. If you know any of these people or anything about this murder, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Some people on the west side waking up to a strange sight, a fire truck in their living room. It got there after a crash in the middle of the night. This was the scene at the apartment building at Hillcrest and West Quill Drive. Crews tell us a driver in a silver car hit the fire truck, sending it crashing into a nearby apartment. Thankfully, no one was in that living room where it struck and the mother and daughter were sleeping in the next room were not hurt. However, the building did have serious damage. A set of stairs and several units were destroyed. People in at least 17 of these apartments are now displaced as a result. The one occupant uh, that was in the, the apartment with the most damage, uh, she and her husband and child had just gone to bed. So you can imagine if this would have been a couple of hours earlier or someone standing on the corner, it could have been multiple tragedies here tonight. We're told the driver of the sedan who caused the mess took off from the scene. Outside with live cam, whoa, grab a hold of something. The wind is blowing, things have changed. I think it's one of those rocks in your pocket or just carry a brick around with you. Might even need a, like a cinder block with you to hold you oh, down. Wow, yeah. I haven't heard that one yet. That works though. <laughs> Hadn't been this windy in a while. <laughs> well, it is. Uh, we've had some gusts close to 40 miles per hour here in San Antonio. And these, these wind gusts are going to stay with us another couple of hours. I think the winds settle a little bit later this afternoon and this evening, but still breezy to windy. I want to show you the time lapse, and this is pretty, um, pretty impressive to watch. We had that front come through this morning. You can see it right there. And then once that came through, you could see what was sort of haze in the air. We think... That's some oak pollen coming off those trees there, along with some dust. Not a great day for allergies, i got to tell you. Uh, those winds did really kick up, as David mentioned. And now we're still looking at some of those uh, gusty winds out there. But blue skies, 72 degrees at the airport. Northerly winds at 22 miles per hour. Dew point is at 37 and falling. Dry air is really starting to work in here. There's a look at the wind gusts. Gusting out of 41 here in San Antonio. Gusting to 23 in Kerrville. Gusting at 38 in New Braunfels, and I think we'll probably see gusts in that range of 30 to maybe 40 miles per hour 
through about 3 p.m. or so, and then the winds will start to calm thereafter, or at least relax a little bit. With those gusty winds and with the dry air moving in, we have a high fire danger today. Red flag warnings are in effect, and that goes through 8 p.m. Temperature wise, well, there's a big spread here. It's 88 in Laredo, 87 in Corpus Christi, but it's in the 60s in the Hill Country. That front ushering in that cooler air. We're sitting at 72 again here in town. 72 Boulevard, 74 in New Braunfels. Pretty comfortable. It'll be a nice evening, minus the winds. 80 degrees at 4 o'clock, 77, 6 p.m., 75 at 7 p.m. And then as we get into tonight, temperatures falling into the 60s and 40s by tomorrow morning. Battle of Flowers could be a little chilly. We'll talk about that coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Justin. After a two year break due to the pandemic, a popular Fiesta event back giving seniors a chance to celebrate Fiesta with smaller crowds, but yet the same big excitement. The Salvation Army holding its 19th annual Senior Fiesta Festival right now. It's happening at the Salvation Army Peacock Boys and Girls Club on the northwest side. That's not far from Woodlong Lake. The event giving some seniors that opportunity to stay out of the traffic and maybe get the party going a little earlier and enjoy a big time. The purpose of the event is to give our senior community an opportunity to experience Fiesta without all the traffic, without all the late hours, and you know, some sometimes the chaos might be a little too much for some people. So this is an opportunity for them to enjoy Fiesta. The festival will run till about uh, two this afternoon. Today is day seven of Fiesta, and it's another jam-packed day. Of course, it includes Niosa and Corniation. You can see a full list of today's events on KSAT.com. It's all there in the Fiesta section. Meantime, science is going to be the focus of a weekend event. UT Health San Antonio is hosting the event at the Witty on Saturday. And this year, our own Sarah Spivey and Katie Blake are going to be the keynote speakers. And this noon, they have a closer look at the fun, family-friendly event. Viva Fiesta and Viva Science! If you know Katie and me, you know that we love science. Absolutely, and we're really excited because this Saturday, April 9th, Sarah and I are going to be the keynote speakers at an event called Viva Science Essay. Viva Science Essay is a free family-friendly STEM workshop put on by UT Health San Antonio. The event will be this Saturday, April 9th from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. at the Mays Center at the Witty Museum. There will be interactive science booths, food trucks, science theme artwork, and more. Sarah and I are the keynote speakers for the event. We are so honored and we're going to be able to talk about atmospheric science, forecasting, and what it's like to be broadcast meteorologists. For more information, you can visit Viva Science essay.com. We hope to see you there and Viva, Viva Fiesta. Fiesta! All right, moving on to something a little less fun, nasty weather leading to a few dozen tornadoes. Where this storm system is now headed, still ahead. And the Spurs now in the play-in tournament thanks to the collapse of the LA Lakers in part. Larry Ramirez with more on that coming up in sports. Plus, the Red Cross and other folks are working to evacuate people from cities under siege amid the war in Ukraine. We'll show you the latest after the break. An even darker, more detailed picture emerging of the atrocities committed by Russian forces in Ukraine. This comes as more horrifying images surface and more witnesses come forward to tell their stories. ABC's James Longman has the latest from Ukraine. This is the main road that connects the capital, Kyiv, to the north of the country, to towns that are now starting to be liberated, where Ukrainian emergency services are getting to, finally, after all these weeks of war. You can see uh, the cleanup is underway. These are Russian military vehicles that have been blocking this road for so long. The battle uh, here may have ended, but now it's the discovery of so many atrocities in these towns uh, which is starting to uh, dominate people's thoughts. Uh, we have just spent time in Bucha, we've been to Borodjanka, we've heard from people their accounts of uh, their neighbors being murdered in front of them. I went to uh, mass graves, people dumped uh, in large pits in the ground because there was nowhere else to put them. Volodymyr Zelensky has been uh, appealing to the international community to do something about this. He spoke to the United Nations Security Council saying that they should just close up if they can't do something uh, in the face of so many atrocities. Russia says all this is staged, it's fake, uh, but we've been here, we've seen it, 
it isn't. James Longman, ABC News in Ukraine. Looking outside with live cam, a pretty day out there. Yesterday, we hit records. 95. Amazing. 95 degrees. But that cold front came through this morning. We're going to be about 15 degrees cooler today. Nice. It just feels better outside. Yes, the winds are gusty, but it just feels sort of refreshing with this cold front coming through. The aquifer, no surprise here, down three tenths of a foot to 650 even. We're getting awful close to stage two. Not there yet, but we're getting closer. Uh, we didn't get much rain yesterday. Some places did, but not here in San Antonio. Oaks in a high category, 830 molds, 920. Everything else is low. Those gusty winds will probably kick up some of these pollen numbers tomorrow. We'll see where we where we land. Great weather ahead. We'll look ahead to the weekend and some rain chances next week. Coming up. We want to get you up to date to the of the severe weather that has been sweeping across the south. There were some damaging winds, tornadoes, flooding from Louisiana to the Carolinas. At least two people have been killed. Now the northeast is being impacted. ABC's Rena Roy has the details for us. One vicious storm system causing at least 41 reported tornadoes and more than 250 damage reports across multiple states. In South Carolina, at least three people injured across the state and four homes destroyed. I'm grateful that we were able to get out. That is wicked. High winds ripping off this roof in Alabel, Georgia. Tornado right there! Take cover! Take cover! This huge funnel cloud caught on camera. Wow, it's doing major damage to you. Debris scattered all over, some transformers even bursting into flames. This road in Alabama submerged drivers navigating the floodwaters. Crews working around the clock to restore electricity and clear roads of fallen trees and power lines. That storm system is now targeting the northeast with heavy rain. Now a second storm is hitting those same areas that already got the brunt of it. More tornadoes expected across multiple states. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. All right, so we Windy made it day. by the the river parade, right? Oh, yeah. That was good. Now we're having a little, I don't know, what what do you call this? A little strange stuff for the next couple of days. As long as it clears up before Friday, I'm we're gonna, all right. I'm going to say it again. It feels like we have so many of these big wind days yeah. this year. It's it's a really bad combination because it has been extremely dry. I, I think what's happening here is we, we have these fronts coming through, but we don't have any rain with them. It's just what we're noticing are the gusty winds. It really is a bad combination because then we have to talk about this fire threat, which is back again today, and it will be back again tomorrow. And until we get some good rain in here, it's going to be a topic of conversation. I want to take you outside. We've got blue skies. Cold front came through this morning, did bring the gusty winds, and we're still seeing them. 72 degrees at the airport. Northerly winds at 22, gusting close to 40. 77 Stinson, 71 Kelly. 69 at Randolph. At least the temperatures are nice. And there are the wind gusts. Gusting to 41 right now at the airport. 23 in New Valley. 23 Kerrville. It's gusting to 38 in New Braunfels. So the winds are pretty consistent here across the entire area. And they're strong. I think we're probably seeing our peak winds about right now. And then we'll slowly see them gradually taper off a little bit later. But it's still going to be a windy day most of the day. The wind gust forecast keeps those wind gusts right there around 30 maybe up to 40 miles per hour through probably two o'clock and then you'll start to see them come down into the gusts into the 25 mile per hour range but a wind advisory is in effect through 3 p.m today trash can if it's outside right now could be in your neighbor's yard mm, that's what we're predicting anyways i mean it uh it may not go that far but just uh just be aware the winds are strong enough to do you know move your trash can a little bit down the street uh, with the gusts that we're seeing right now uh, here's a look at the temperatures, 72 again at the airport, but you've got 60s in the hill country. That feels nice. Down to the south, that head of the front, we're still in the upper 80s. There's some 90s down there in the valley. It's going to be a hot day down there until that front pushes all the way through. Uh, but we'll continue to see some pretty comfortable temperatures throughout the rest of today. Definitely cooler than yesterday. 69 right now, Canyon Lake, 75 Castroville. We just jumped up to 74 there at Port Este and 72 at Randolph, 77 at Stinson. Red flag warnings are in effect. As we said, that fire danger is there. Those gusty winds, very dry dew points. And so anything, if a fire were to develop, it could spread 
very, very rapidly. And that red flag warning goes through 8 p.m. Here's a look at our forecast as far as temperatures go. I think we make it up to about 80 this afternoon. 70 is in the hill country for highs. And then tonight, those temperatures plummet. We got clear skies, winds lighten up a little bit, dry conditions, we're all the way down to 47 by tomorrow morning. What a start. Mid 40s, even probably cooler in the hill country. We could see some low 40s there. And then we'll rebound nicely during the afternoon. But Thursday and Friday, beautiful days. Beautiful days. If you're right now to Nyosa tonight, Still breezy around 5 o'clock, 80 degrees, 70 by 8 p.m. And those temperatures fall quickly, 65 by 10 p.m. with clear conditions. Uh, here's the setup. We've got that front that uh, came through. It's pushing through most of Texas now. There's cooler air for much of the plains. That cooler air, though, interacting with some warm, humid air across the southeast. You just saw that story there with all the tornadoes. There's probably going to be more severe weather today. Places like Atlanta, Birmingham, Greenville. Uh, down into parts of Florida as the system pushes east. So a busy weather for the southeast, not for us, other than the wind. 79 tomorrow, 81 on Friday for Battle of the Flowers. But Battle of Flowers, when it occurs Friday morning, I think we could be in the 50s, 60s. <laughs> it's incredible. When was the last time that happened? I know. Uh, 85 Saturday, there are some rain chances coming back next week. Next week could be a little more active. All right, Justin, thank you. Mm -hmm. Spurs on a roll at the right time. They appear to be peaking, don't they? Playing yeah. some very good basketball. Then they go into Denver last night and beat one of the top teams in the Western Conference. And because of that and some help they got, the Spurs are now play inbound. And the Oklahoma City Thunder cheered on a fan for making a big shot. Coming up. I don't, I, we're just playing every game, you know, it, the old trite thing. We got a game on Thursday and we're going to play that, not worry about anything else. It's not like we're world beaters. The hoop, it is on to the next game for Pop on the Spurs after beating Spurs the Nuggets wins. last night Spurs in Big Board wins. Sports. So last night the Spurs clinched a playing term berth thanks to beating the Nuggets while getting some help from the Phoenix Suns. San Antonio played some great basketball in the Mile High City. Second quarter, off the miss, Zach Collins grabs a rebound, passes to Devin Vassell for a three-pointer. Vassell scored 20 points and he was one of six Spurs to reach double digits. Spurs led by 20 at halftime and then fought off the Nuggets' comeback attempt. After they got within four early in the fourth, the Spurs take it 116 to 97 and still have a shot at moving up to number nine in the Western Conference. Me, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Minnesota. I know he played the Timberwolves next. They got a good team. Um, at this point, it's all about taking care of us, taking care of what we got to do. So whatever they got going on is what they got. But with the Spurs, we're going to compete the rest of these games. Hopefully we get DJ back soon, and, and that's going to be huge for us. DJ, we miss you, bro. And uh, we're going to go from there. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of that achievement, but it's it's not about being satisfied. I don't think we're, we're satisfied yet. We want to... Um, take those opportunities and, and win those games and make it to the playoffs. To Jones. Check out Trey Jones lobbing the ball to Jakob Pearl for some icing on the cake last night. The Spurs have won three straight and seven of their last eight games. So here's the next game matchup. The Spurs will play at the Timberwolves tomorrow night at 7. LeBron James sat out again last night due to a sprained ankle, so he had to sit and watch the Lakers lose in Phoenix, 121-110 to to eliminate L.A. from the playoff race. The Lakers started off nicely, leading by eight points in the first quarter, but once the Suns got rolling, it was game over. Devin Booker scored 32 points for the Suns, who picked up their franchise record 63rd win. The Lakers have lost seven straight and have three games left in the regular season. I don't know. I mean, it's obviously disappointing on many levels, but... And much you can do about it at this point. We had to, we had the tools. Uh, some things was was out of our control. Some things that we could control. Some things we couldn't. Um, and it's, it's it's nothing else more than we didn't get it done. I mean, you can't make no no excuses about it. We just didn't get it done. Here's the Western Conference play-in berth race. The Clippers, Pelicans, and Spurs have all clinched a spot. Now the Spurs can still move up to nine, and that means they would host the Pelicans in the play-in tournament instead of facing them in New Orleans. The Lakers, Kings, Blazers, Thunder, and Rockets have all been eliminated. And we end with a dude making some serious money. Oklahoma City Thunder fan knocks down a half-court shot during a timeout. 
to win $20,000, and he got a shout-out from Thunder Guard Shea Gilgis Alexander. The fan is Connor O'Malley. He banked in the shot off the backboard and celebrated his win with a hug from Thunder mascot Rumble. Sign him up. Thunder could use that guy. <laughs> yeah, right. Lakers might be able to use him. That's a lot of talent on the Lakers, Lakers to be sitting at home. A little bit late. Yeah. Isn't that a shame? Lakers buying all that talent. Yeah. And it didn't work. It didn't get, they had nothing for it. Nope. Oh, too bad. A heads up if you're planning a summer vacation, domestic flight costs have increased 40% since January. And they're expected to climb even higher. How you can get better deals in the next half hour. And if you're short on time but still want to squeeze in some Netflix, the app has a new category for shorter films. Our segment on a comedy show led to the creation. On Capitol Hill, America's top general warning lawmakers that the world is only growing more unstable and dangerous. This comes as the U.S. is facing a new arms race with Russia and China. ABC's Martha Raddatz has more from Washington. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs General, Mark Milley, said Ukraine's war with Russia could go on for years, but even greater conflicts could be on the horizon as world powers battle for dominance on the ground and in the air. This morning, the U.S. announcing that it will join forces with the U.K. and Australia to develop hypersonic weapons and measures to counter them. These highly maneuverable missiles reach altitudes up to 300,000 feet and are nearly impossible to detect, much less defend against. Advances by China and Russia, despite tactical failures on the ground in Ukraine, have deeply concerned the U.S., Russia claiming to have used its own hypersonic missile in combat in Ukraine, and China reportedly launching one last year that flew around the world and fired a projectile while traveling more than five times the speed of sound. The U.S. spent 20 years fighting counterinsurgencies in Iraq and Afghanistan, while China and Russia were spending money on these kinds of weapons that would enable great power competition. The U.S. is well behind but trying to catch up. The U.S. confirming that that it has conducted testing recently, but the Pentagon did not want to announce it at the time, fearing it would only increase tensions with Russia as the world's attention focuses on the deadly conflict in Ukraine. A conflict that America's top general is now warning Congress may not be the last. We are entering a world that is becoming more unstable and the potential for significant international conflict between great powers is increasing. That is one reason the U.S. is so concerned about this hypersonic missile. The U.S. has thus far only tested it twice. Martha Raddatz, ABC News, Washington. The leaders of big oil on Capitol Hill today to testify about gas prices during the Ukraine war. The biggest question they are facing, why are Americans paying more for gas? BP America, Chevron, and Exxon Mobil executives are among the big oil leaders who will face questions from lawmakers on the House Energy and Commerce Committee on oversight and investigations. The hearing comes as costs for gas rose following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which prompted the U.S. to put on a ban of the imports of Russian oil and gas. So the price of gas has gone down slightly in recent days. Americans are still paying over $4 a gallon in most places. The cost of your summer vacation is going up. The travel season this summer is just around the corner, and experts say you may want to start tracking your flights right now and book by the first week of May. But remember, there are still deals to be had. The key is to know when to look. So you want to target right in the middle, what I call the Goldilocks window, not too early, not too late. For domestic flights, it's about one to three months in advance of travel. For international travel, about two to eight months ahead of time. According to online booking site Hopper, domestic flights are up 40% from the beginning of the year. Round trip domestic fares are now averaging $330. That's up 7% from two years ago. The White House is attempting to speed up the nation's response to long COVID by establishing a new task force to coordinate research efforts across the government. That's why the Food and Drug Administration is having a panel of experts meet to discuss booster shots ahead of the upcoming fall season. The experts will receive ahead of their meeting predictions for possible waves, variants, and how to best match those predictions with a future vaccine. The FDA panel will be called back again to meet and will then make a decision on boosters in the coming months. 
Taking a look outside with live cam. You can't really tell, but boy, was it windy this morning. I'm wondering, Justin, have, a, have things settled down just a little bit? Uh, actually, the winds have picked up some just within the last couple of hours. But the good news here, Ursula, is that those winds will eventually calm some a little bit later this afternoon and into this evening. I want to show you the state of Texas because you can very clearly pick out where our cold front is. It's 53 up there in Amarillo, our typical cool spot. And you go down to Brownsville where it is 88. The front has yet to make it down there yet. It's making some slow progress off to the south. But it is through San Antonio and it feels pretty nice outside. Uh, with those gusty winds, of course, out of the north and northwest. Satellite picture, well, we've got clear skies across the state. There were some clouds earlier, and you can see right along the front, there is still a cloud deck there that is uh, working its way into the Gulf of Mexico. Any rain associated with this front was well off to our east, and that's where a lot of the severe weather will be across the southeast a little bit later today. In fact, tornado watch boxes now being issued there for parts of Georgia and the Carolinas. Wind gusts gusting to 41 at the airport right now, gusting to 35 in Hondo, 29 in Kerrville. It's gusty anywhere you go across South Texas today, and that's a problem because we do have a lot of dry air, high fire danger today. We can't reiterate that enough. Temperature-wise, 79 degrees by 3 p.m. We top out at 80. We hit that at about 5 o'clock. 77, 6 p.m. Evening plans. You're heading out to Nyosa tonight. 75 at 7 o'clock. Northeasterly wind still at about 15 miles per hour. The winds do try to come down some as we get later into the night, 65 at 10 p.m. with clear skies. Thank you, Justin. Depending on the weather, Tiger Woods going through his final test before teeing up tomorrow during the first round of the Masters. Larry Mears with more on that coming up in sports. An SNL skit leading Netflix to make a change. It has a new category for people who want to watch a movie, but they don't have the hours needed to kill. Details after the break. Comedian Pete Davidson has gotten his wish. During a digital short on Saturday Night Live, the comedian complained about the lack of short movies on Netflix. So the streaming service apparently was listening. Well, they have created a new category for films shorter than one hour and 40 minutes. And some of the movies on the list include Zoolander, Stand By Me, Scary Movie 4, and Scary Movie 5. One film not on the list, Davidson's semi-autobiographical The King of Staten Island. Must be a long one. Yeah, that movie was more than two hours long. Wow. during the pandemic with some scenes filmed in very close quarters. CNN's Rick Damagella has a preview. Officers down in front of the bank, automatic weapons being fired. Easy, 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 easy. You wanna drive or can I drive? A heist gone wrong leads to a citywide chase in Michael Bay's ambulance. Bank robbery suspects have taken an ambulance. I got a cop shot. Gotta get him to the hospital. We do hostages now. Yeah! Made during the pandemic, ambulance required filming inside the moving vehicle. This movie was just like all hands on deck. We're going to use what we got, who we got. Uh, we're going to be safe, uh, but that meant that I was going to be doing a lot of the driving. We are trying to save you. I thought, if it's hard to act in this space, I can't even imagine what it's like to try and save someone's life in this space. And that was a constant thought it in was. all of our minds, where it we were like, fun. you know, how do they do it? But it was so fun. It's like connecting to being a kid again. You know, it's like being on the Disney ride over and over and over again. Lock everything down. Nothing gets out. Director Michael Bay brings the audience inside the action through the use of drones. I felt drone technology is kind of boring and I wanted to re kind of invent it. And I found these world best drone racers and we made smaller drones and they go much faster. And I'm sure it's a style that will be imitated in other movies. Um, but uh, I think I did it first, so that's good. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. I think the drones have changed things, really. I mean, he might be the first one to do it that way, but I, I think mean, it brings something new to it. Looks cool, but it's very Michael Bay. Like right? that's yeah. that's his kind of movie, for sure. We'll see how it turns out. Hey, beautiful out there right now. Blue skies, 72 degrees so far today. 62 was the low this morning. 
by tonight, we're going to see those temperatures drop into the 40s. Won't be records or anything like that, but it will be chilly. 34 is the record low set back in 1966. Record high is 94 set back in 1948. Yesterday, we did get the record. Not today. We stay in the 70s and low 80s. Uh, we'll talk about the weekend forecast, your Fiesta forecast, all of that's coming up. This day in Fiesta history is powered by the Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Welcome, welcome, friends, to a cataclysm a half century in the making. It's raucous, hilarious, and during Fiesta, tickets for this locally produced show go fast. And year after year, audiences keep coming back for more. Coronation is essentially a spoof on the uh, coronation. It's a spectacle like a Broadway theater with no talent. We uh, make a satire of various uh, local, state, regional, or national events. This night of nonsense dates back to the 1950s and a local theater director named Joe Salick. While attending an actual coronation ceremony, he found he couldn't stop laughing. So in 1951, he staged a parody event at the Arneson River Theater as part of the night in Old San Antonio. The show continued annually until tragedy struck in 1964. A performer's diaper fell off during a skit, and it must have been bad because the event wasn't held again until 1979. Then in 1982, local artists and designers fully revived the celebration. Now under the reign of King Anchovy, it's grown into a must-see fiesta event and one of Texas's longest running LGBTQ plus celebrations. And if you want to get tickets to it, good luck, because it's almost yeah. always sold out the second they go on sale. The good news is it's inside, so there won't be any wind blowing through there. So the wind. diapers will stay on. <laughs> we can only hope. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is gusty out there, that's for sure. A uh, little less wind as we get into tonight, and uh, some breezy conditions tomorrow, but less wind tomorrow. Uh, generally speaking, too. I want to show you the time lapse. Speaking of the, the gusty winds, we had that front come through this morning, right about there, 7, 7.15 or so. Front came through, had some dark clouds, but no, no rain with it. And then, uh, then right about there, we started noticing what looked like some dust and a little, probably oak pollen coming off some of the trees there. It, uh, it was hazy for a time this morning after the front came through. So if you're an allergy sufferer, that's not fun to look at. Uh, but the, it's possible that oak could be quite a bit higher tomorrow. 72 degrees right now. Northerly winds at 22 miles per hour. Dew point is at 37 and falling. Wind gusts have been the big story today. We're still gusting close to 41 here in town. Uh, about 30 to 40 on the gusts in most spots at this hour. And the wind gust forecast does show we'll have a steady decrease, but it'll take some time to get to, to where we have lighter winds and that will probably be overnight. We're still going to get gusts around 30 miles per hour, even at three o'clock and then probably in the 20 to 25 mile per, per hour range, if I can say that uh, this evening. Wind advisories are in effect until 3 p.m. Temperature wise, 69 Fredericksburg, 70 in Kerrville. Some of the cooler air trying to work in with that front. It's still very, very warm down to the south. 87 in Corpus Christi, 88 Laredo. Front's not there yet, but it will get there. Slowly but surely, it is pushing south. And right around Bear County, the temperatures are really comfortable. 74 Boulevard, 73 Randolph, 77 as Stinson. And I, I will probably get up to about 80. That's it today. I mean, you can't beat that kind of weather. Dew points are in the 30s and 40s, but these numbers are dropping. And the forecast is for them to drop a little bit more as we head into the afternoon. Some low 30s, dew points in the 20s in some spots. And that makes it ripe for wildfires and grass fires. We got to be really careful here with the winds the way they are today. And tomorrow, these dew points go even lower. Now, the winds aren't as strong tomorrow, but the air is going to be drier. So there's still going to be a fire threat again on Thursday. So you'll probably see these red flag warnings issued again tomorrow. But they include the whole area today, and that goes through 8 p.m. this evening. Any grass fire will spread very rapidly. Now let's talk temperatures. Uh, I think by uh, 5 o'clock, we're sitting close to 80. A lot of places still in the 70s, though. And then by tonight, temperatures really fall off. We got clear skies, dry air down to 47 by tomorrow morning here in town. And I know this shows 47 in Kerrville. I would imagine that number is going to be lower, maybe low 40s, 44 Bandera, 
40s in Canyon Lake for sure. Even down to Pleasanton, I would imagine we'll see some 40s on the map. So a chilly start. But if you're heading out to Niosa tonight, looks good. A, a little warm to start, but I mean, it's going to be comfortable by 8 o'clock. 70 degrees, clear skies, and those winds, again, will try to calm some. Very quickly, got to mention this. Rainfall, we're in really bad shape here. 2.38 inches. We are now 4 inches below average for the year, and you add on our deficit from the end of last year, we are in a bad situation here. We do need some rain, and thankfully there is some in the extended forecast by Sunday, Monday into Tuesday. We do have some chances, not great chances, but maybe some thunderstorms trying to uh, pop up there by Monday into Tuesday. We'll keep you posted. In the meantime, some great weather. Mornings in the 40s, afternoons near 80 next couple days. Can't beat that. Bring on the rain yep. after Fiesta. Yes. I know we're going to talk about basketball, but the Tiger shoes story is is, is very interesting. I mean, this yeah. guy doesn't roll this and never worried about his shoes. Now, see, David, you're messing up. My I know. I, I, uh, I told you. Giving it away. Uh, it. Come on, David. Was that your team? Hey, I didn't send that Tiger's video up shoe. anyway. So, yes, Tiger Woods <laughs> did change his shoes for the Masters. Well, well we know that already. Why. And in sports, <laughs> Spurs sports, I should say. Spurs, what am I saying? <laughs> Nikola Jokic, you know, he got his last night. The Spurs let him. I did mess you up. Because they tried part. to sh stop everybody else. <laughs> he did mess you was up. They'll the explain shoes? coming up. <laughs> it might have been the shoes. It was the shoes. I don't know what it was. <laughs> the Spurs went to Denver and beat the Nuggets 116-97 last night to earn a play-in tournament spot. The Spurs left Denver with the magic number of one to clinch, and then the Suns beat the Lakers to make the Spurs play and wish a reality. Denver's big man Nikola Jokic scored a game-high 41 points last night, just one of two Nuggets in double figures. Now the Spurs let him get his points, and they tried to keep every other Nugget from getting involved. They guarded him with single coverage, and the defensive plan worked out. If he scored 50, we didn't we didn't care, but we knew that he's just too damn smart, as we all know. Um, you start double teaming him, and then you wonder when do we do it? Do you do it on the dribble here, there, where he's there, that kind of thing, and then he just eat you alive and everybody else starts to participate in it so uh, we just decided we'd go with it and we we did it for the whole 48 instead of going back and forth and being confused all night so i think it, it worked out for us but they had to help us i don't think they had a great shooting night uh i think that's pretty obvious i didn't look at the stats but yeah um like, like pop said that was that was a game plan We'll, we'll live with him taking twos and we'll try to take away everybody else and try to limit those threes and I think we did a good job with that. Spurs are now in Minneapolis where they'll play the Timberwolves tomorrow night. So here's the Western Conference playing race. The Clippers, Pelicans and Spurs have all clinched a spot. The Spurs can still move up to nine, which would be huge because that means the Spurs would host the Pelicans in the playing tournament instead of facing them in New Orleans. Now the Lakers, Kings, the Blazers, Thunder and Rockets have all been eliminated from the postseason. Turning the golf, Tiger Woods told the media yesterday that he plans on making his comeback at the Masters this week. Tiger has not played on the PGA Tour since November of 2020 in that year's pandemic delayed Masters and has since had to recover from a car crash in February 2021 that almost cost him his right leg. Tiger believes he can win his 16th major and his sixth green jacket. He's used to coming back from injuries and dealing with pain on the golf course. It's been one of those things where I've I've had to endure pain before and um, this is different. Obviously this is a lot more traumatic what has transpired to my leg. Uh, We've had to put a lot of work, but as I said, I'm very thankful to my surgeons and my, my PTs and physios that have have worked on me and have given me this opportunity to uh, to play golf. It's amazing if you think about where he was at, you know, a year ago to now. I don't know how many people, if anybody, you know, could be out here on this. And this is not an easy walk. So to be out here um, and not to throw his age in the mix, but I don't think that helps much at all for that kind of recovery, but uh, is anybody surprised? <laughs> Tiger's shoes recently made some big news as well. He's wearing foot joys and not Nike. He told the media he has very limited mobility right now, and the foot joys offer him more stability. Round one of the Masters will tee off tomorrow, and it'll be interesting to see how yeah. Tiger does if he does play. Yeah, he's got to play that nine today, but uh, there's supposed to be some bad weather out there, so he may not even get that in. Yep. We'll see. All right, Larry, thanks. All right, we're going to head over to SA Live and I
get the impression from what they're wearing they're going to talk fiesta. Mm. You know, oh, yes. We yeah. fiestify a lot of stuff on this show. We do. <laughs> and of course, fiesta means food. And everybody likes food on a stick. And nobody does it better than this gentleman right here, Leo Davila. <laughs> from Sticks and Stone, all right? Oh, nice. We're going to put food on a stick. Absolutely. And you're from Sticks and Stones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's kind of our name says. Everybody loves food on a stick, especially around this time. What do we have there? Uh, so this is our savory option. So we have our beef, chicken, and pork belly skewers. Three different sauce options, really, really great. And then we got a dessert twist that we're going to play for you as well. Which is what? It's going to be thresh leches. On a stick. On a stick. Thresh leches on you... a stick? Hmm. We're going to find out. And then we're going to get to eat it. Yes. And then we can find out where you can get one of these. And guess who's giving them out? Jen Tobias Drusky. Where are you, Jen? It's a beautiful day to be handing out medals. We're over here, I can't tell you exactly where, but we have our medals ready. And if you're paying attention, maybe you're seeing a hint right now where we're at. Okay, we're gonna reveal the location. You guys can come out here, two o'clock, we'll be handing them out. Back to you, Fiona and Mike. Okay, chocolate. Yes, Milk please. chocolate, dark chocolate. Chocolate from around the world. All these gourmet chocolates, and they turn into some of these delectable treats. We're going to tell you where exactly you can find these this weekend. At a one big fiesta event. Big, big fiesta event. One of the more popular ones as well. And there are two new bundles of joy over at Animal World and Snake Farm Zoo. We are going to introduce you to some white lion cubs. You got to meet them, didn't you? Did. Oh, that's so cool. So, okay, one parade down, and we've got a few more. Which is your favorite, the one you can't miss? Let us know on SA Live. Right now on KSAT.com, wellness and workout classes can be a good way to unwind. And we've got a list of some of the free classes you can try at San Antonio Parks, businesses, community centers, and libraries year-round. Take a look at what the Alamo City has to offer. It's all there for you on KSAT.com. And it's windy out there. We're starting to see a trend though, of those winds trying to come down a little bit. Still some gusts 25 to 30 miles per hour throughout the rest of the afternoon and evening. Temperature 75 right now. We'll make it up to about 80. 47 tomorrow morning. 79 on Thursday. Just perfect weather. Uh, Friday looks good too. 81 after starting off at 43. We will get some clouds back in place and maybe some rain chances starting next week. Thank you, Justin. And thank you for watching the News at Noon with us. So what we had, we had food on a stick, we had some chocolate, and we had the possibility of getting an SA Live Fiesta medal. It's a win, win, win. Like that. SA Live starts right now. Today on SA Live, we're going to introduce you to some of the newest bundles of joy here at Animal World and Snake Farm Zoo. Hello. Plus, it's your chance to get our official SA Live Fiesta medal for free. We're about to reveal the secret giveaway location in just a couple of minutes. Are you a chocolate lover? Think you know chocolate? Oh, these gourmet chocolates are from all around the world, and they get turned into these delights. And I'm going to tell you where you can find them at a Fiesta event this weekend. That and a lot more today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Indeed it is. Look at the crowd here bustling at Historic Market Square. Good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorsiza. And I'm Mike Osterhage. Oh my goodness gracious, it couldn't be any better out here today. And, you know, we are definitely in the thick of Fiesta right now. One parade down. We've got two big ones to go. Of course, Battle of Flowers on Friday morning and the Flambeau on Saturday evening. And which parade is the one that is your must-see? Can't do without it. Exactly. The one you can't miss. It'll let us know it on Facebook and Twitter at SA Live KSAT. And you might see the answers a little later on in the show. By the way, we are throwing our very own parade this year, Friday, right here, one o'clock, just putting it out there. Lots of cute dogs oh, and yeah. floats. Should I take this off, Leo? Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of done. Take them off right okay. now. Our All next right. guest has something big to celebrate this fiesta. He's on a brand new Food Network show and has a shot at $250,000 towards his own restaurant. 
Yes, our good friend Leo Davila from Six Stone is here to tell us about how he's representing the Alamo City in this cooking competition and how he has got some great twists on some classic Fiesta foods. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah. So hey we'll guys. get to that yeah. big show and opportunity in just a second, but what are we making right yeah, now? Yeah, so you know, Fiesta time, every beloved, everything on a stick, right? So Chicken kind of in like, this one? Yeah, yeah, we can throw it in there. Okay. So what we're going to do is a savory and a sweet option. So savory, we're going to do a chicken, beef, and pork belly skewer. We're known for our pork belly. On those, we're going to do three different sauces, a yakitori, a Chinese barbecue, and a gojijang glaze. And that's going to be good. So Mike's going to get that cooked up. He got the pork belly nice and seared. Chicken is going to go. Hard there. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I love it, I love it when he got to do double pan duty, you know, <laughs> make him earn his food. So Fiona, on this side, we're going to have a little bit different twist on our Thresh Leches cake. Okay. So everybody knows Thresh Leches. So we have our three milk right here. So what we've done is we cut these into squares. Yeah, we're just going to dump them in there. Now, All we the make way. our cake a little bit more on the moist side so this soap doesn't take five, 10, 15 minutes like it would in a traditional cake. So it's gonna be about a 10 to 15 second soak. If you wanna do that, you wanna cut some strawberries and cut those into squares as well. On the strawberries, we're just gonna kinda of cut them in half. Okay. Mike, how you doing over there? Good, I think getting brown smells chicken. Good. Yeah, yeah, it smells good. Right. Fantastic. All right, while these are browning up and she's doing that, tell us about the show. Yeah, so big restaurant event on Food Network. You know, uh, you know, thousands of people auditioned. I was fortunate enough to be one of the eight chefs selected. Um, super, super crazy, fun pace, fast. Uh, exhilarating experience. It was really, really great. Um, you know, we compete every week. You know, last night was the premiere. Um, we did our, our, you know, one bite. You know, we had a uh, impressed chef, Jeffrey Zakarian. We did a pork belly tostada, which you can't get at the restaurant. Thankfully enough, I won that challenge, so that was really great for us. Um, then Wonderful. we went into a chicken competition on how to cook a whole bird for technique and culinary training. Um, made it to the bottom three, but I survived to play another week. So tune in next week to see how we do on that front. So what was it like being on that show? Uh, you know, it, 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 was, it was great. You know, nervous, nerve wracking, yeah. you know, live, everything just in your face, one shot, kind of like how we do here. Oh, yeah. um, like I said, yeah. like I said, y'all yeah. make me feel super comfortable though. So this is really easy being here. Um, and plus, Mike's cooking, so I get to relax today. So it's all good. <laughs> yeah, and then we're just gonna skewer up these skewers. Um, you know, alternating cake, uh -huh. strawberry, cake, strawberry. And then we do it a little different. So we have a house strawberry jam, not overly sweet. It's gonna go on the bottom. And then this is our chopped up mousse. Ooh. So our chopped up whipped cream is gonna go on top with a little bit of cinnamon sugar dust. Okay, the, the beef looks like it's done. What sauce? Yeah, do I put and then on Mike, there? I have a Chinese barbecue. The second one. This one. Yes, sir. Right there. We'll throw that right in there. Toss it. So what we do is we make a really good Texas barbecue sauce, and then we throw a little garlic, mirin, tamari. Um, just get a little bit more ginger, a little bit more Asian ingredients. Okay. And then on the chicken side, we're gonna throw the yakitori. So if you're not familiar with the yakitori, it's similar to like a, a teriyaki, just not as sweet. We don't add the pineapple in there. So it's more of a savory soy sauce, if you will. Okay. Beautiful. All right, Fiona, have you ever okay. used the ISI whip canister before? No. I believe in you. So it's pretty simple. We'll shake down. Okay. And then you're just gonna do a slow, gradual squeeze, and we're just gonna try to do a nice little oh, that looks so flour good. right there. Well, nice okay. little flour, okay. So what is the one per that you can't miss? When uh, it comes the night to parade. You know, growing up, we did both parades like everybody else, but then eventually just went to just the night parade. So that's just an amazing time okay. to be with family and friends. And Fiona, strawberry jam is a finishing touch. <laughs> just right on top. Yep. Beautiful. Gonna let those cook up there just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Looking great. All right, there's mine. All, All right. right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of pork belly on here <laughs> and then mix it in with a little bit of beef. All three of them? Is that yeah, how I do it? Yeah, absolutely. And they just came off hot, so be careful. Yes, be you know, careful. Got to get is. those kitchen hands going. <laughs> so while he's working there, of course, tell folks how they can try your food for themselves. Yeah, yeah. so we're located in Leon Valley, 410 and Bandera. More so Bandera and Wurzbach. So behind that abandoned Sonic on the Wurzbach side across from the Ancier dealership. Um, you know, Wednesday through Sunday, we do a great Sunday brunch as well. But 12 to 9, Wednesday through Saturday. So I assume uh, with Easter coming up and then Mother's Day after that, great place for us. Uh, some brunch absolutely Sunday brunch is you know kind of our bread and butter same style of menu just a little bit more egg focus we'll be doing some specialty items as well like uh, what? so we're gonna do like a, our version of like green eggs and ham you know play with that with the pesto nice roasted ham even pork belly with that a okay. uh, little bit more classic prime rib dishes uh, you know my mom is a big French to toast lover she's here with me today and uh, you know so we're gonna showcase our French toast as well hi mom <laughs> and if it wasn't for my mom, I actually wouldn't have been on the Food Network show yeah, you, either. You said oh, it was your mom and your girlfriend. Yeah, so my mom and my girlfriend, you know, that, right? we, uh, it was like down to that 11th hour, and they were like, you know, sign up, sign up, do it, do it. And I was like, I really don't want to. I submitted the application. Next day, I got the call to interview, and then a week later, I was
was casting for the show. So well, I did that. Yeah, pretty amazing. Delicious. They just said that cheat that I was taking samples here. <laughs> I'm your cook. I can eat, okay? <laughs> Try this right here. Okay, well, you can see San Antonio's own chef, Leo Davila, compete on Big Restaurant Bet. Episodes are streaming now on Discovery Plus, or you can try his food for yourself uh, at Sticks and Stone. For more information, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. I think that was our visitors from Fort Collins, Colorado, that said I was cheating when I was taking samples here. You got to get used to the San Antonio way. So, all right, speaking of San Antonio and Fiesta Metals, mm -hmm. it is time for the big San Antonio Live, SA Live Fiesta Metal giveaway. Yes, it starts at 2 p.m., and you might even get some Fiesta bling there too. What? Our Jen Tobias Fesky is out there live. Hey there, Jen. Hello. Okay, I'm at a store, a popular store on the far west side. I'm about to give you a hint. I mean, if you can't tell already, look how beautiful that is. Yes, gorgeous charms. Yes, we are at the James Avery store on the Loop 1604 near Petranco. We will be handing out our free SA Live medals starting at 2 p.m. And if you get here early enough, you might even get another freebie, another freebie from James Avery. And I'm now out here with the store manager, Claudia Miller. Viva Fiesta. Viva Fiesta. So happy to be here today, Claudia. So um, you, all, you have some beautiful charms for every occasion. Fiesta, no exception, right? Yes, we do. We love Fiesta here at James Avery. We are a Texas-based company, so we love Fiesta. It's very fun for us. Well, I'm glad you're embracing it, and I already spotted this gorgeous jewelry. Tell me about what you have here for Fiesta. Yes, let me go ahead and show you. So we do have our enamel taco charm. So cute. We can add a pop of color with these beads. We have a don't mess with Texas charm. So cute. A margarita, the enamel hot sauce, the jalapeno charm, perfect for the chicken on a stick, which is <laughs> very popular for Fiesta. We have our new enamel maracas. Uh, we we also have some Fiesta earrings, some ear posts. They're so cute and they're actually called Fiesta. We do also have an enamel piñata charm right here. Uh, we have plenty of Texas rings, uh, Texas script rings, a desert rose ring as well. We have changeable bracelets. Um, like I said, you can also add a pop of color with a little cactus charm. We do have our Viva Fiesta charm, so popular right now, also with color, That's just to make it beautiful. more festive. You can add that to any outfit, right? Yes, you it. do. You can. We also have our little turquoise necklace. It's a really beautiful layered look. Beautiful. Now, it's not just the Fiesta charms that you have out here and the jewelry. You have some new items for spring over there. Yes, wow. we do. So we have a lot of awesome rings, new rings that we just released on Monday. And so our new popular one is a little rose of the bee. It's stacked, so it's really fun to stack with different things. We have a lot of new charms. So our greeting from Texas is enameled personalizing it in the back is so cute with a heart. We do have the Feliz Cumpleaños charm, the Mama Llama, the floral pendant is so cute for Mother's Day as well. Uh, right now our popular one is this little cute T-Rex right here. The T-Rex, how yeah, cute. Yeah, we have nice ring earrings as well, hammered and star ear post. And then this really, really bold toggle bracelet. It's so beautiful with a little floral charm. That's and cool. never too early to start thinking about the Mother's Day, for example, and then obviously you have all the spring uh, Yes, it's so festive, adding a lot of color to Fiesta. So when people come out here today, 2 o'clock, again, that is the magic hour to get the SA Live medal. They can also get something from you guys. Up yes, a James Avery people. red leather tassel. Yes. So cute. So cute to match with a handbag, also with a wallet. You can buy online at jamesavery.com and do select curbside for pickup. Beautiful. Okay. Our SA Live Fiesta Metal Giveaway starts at 2 p.m. today. James Avery Store, Loop 1604, near Petrenko, out here on the far west side. For more information on James Avery, just give them a call, 1-800-283-1770. To find a James Avery Store near you, just visit their website, jamesavery.com slash stores. Thank you so much, Claudia. Thank you. What do you guys think? Isn't that cute? Oh, that's that is beautiful. so cute, Jen. Thank you so much. We're going to check back in with you in a few minutes. All right, still ahead on SA Live. Anyone can be royalty for Fiesta. We're showing you an easy and creative way to make your own flower crowns. But first, a huge Fiesta event is back. From the parade to pups to the food, we have the details and what one vendor is debuting for the celebration. It's next on SA Live. It's 